Hello everyone, I'm Food for Dogs and today I want to take a journey with you through Xenoblade Chronicles from the early days, from the beginnings, right up to the latest edition. This um, collector set, the physical edition, was a bit late coming into New Zealand, but it did arrive eventually, um, of course, um, because of the COVID-19 situation. As is usual with um, EB Games and GameStop in the United States, they often do not wrap or seal even limited or collector's editions. And the same applied to this one. It just came in the box as is, no outer wrapping. So there was in fact not a lot of unboxing or unwrapping to do. The only thing that was wrapped in cellophane was this big art book and I obviously did remove the cellophane but but that was it so you really haven't missed a lot in the unboxing department. This is our second attempt at doing a video on this topic. Unfortunately um, those four weeks ago when we had our first attempt we had a few technical issues and the video didn't turn out very well. Additionally, I'd have to say that was around the time when I had my big problem with my back injury flaring up again and I was obviously in pain, but I thought I could power through it and uh, do an unboxing anyway. Well, it wasn't such a good idea and I think I've learned my lesson there. So we're doing it today in a much more uh, relaxed manner and as you can see I've spread out everything I have related to Xenoblade Chronicles and we'll be going through everything because there's a lot to talk about really. Uh, just to mention that uh, this is the European uh, PAL edition of the collector's set. For the United States it was slightly different. Uh, those of you who got it in the States will have got a red box and I believe there was no steel book included in that particular set. And I'll just show you the back of the box. So this is a rather large box, so I'll put it down here for the moment so we can see a bit better. So the edition comes with a beautiful um, steel book. I'll just open that up for you so you can see the design uh, better. And the a collector set comes with a, a soundtrack which I've already put on. It's playing in the background, so that is nice. I assume it's not a full OST, uh, but there certainly is a lot on there. I think it said 70 minutes. And uh, inside that big box was this uh, cardboard insert which held everything safely in place and has the, um, the design. So I'll just put that uh, down as well so we are not quite so cluttered so I can show you the art books a bit later. Now there's one thing that puzzles me about this new edition, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, and that is that my collector set came with a little bonus, which is a, a key ring, a Monado key ring, which is nice, it's a nice touch, and I immediately looked at it and thought, yes, Monado, and then, just like on the box here as well, same design. And then I thought, no, Monado the other way around. And they have flipped it or inverted it 
because all the covers for the game and all three editions, the Monado is the other way round. But on the print material for the new definitive edition, it's this way round. Now, I'm wondering, is there a reason for this? And this could possibly keep me awake at night. So I really would like the publisher to issue a statement about why, please why, did they decide to do the Monado design the other way round? I really would like to know that. <laughs> okay. So where did it all start? Big question. The answer is it all started here with the original game for the Wii. Now, that came out in Japan in 2010, PAL regions 2011, and North America finally 2012. It's a huge RPG if you haven't played it yourself. It's absolutely amazing. I loved it all the time I played it. Huge open world, wonderful characters, huge beasts and enemies to, um, you know, take down. It's just, it was just totally amazing. A real, real quality, high quality RPG. Now, I can't quite remember, I don't think I ever finished it. Why not? Because I obviously loved it. I think it may have had to do with uh, Nintendo's uh, funny way of doing the controllers. I'll just show you the manual. Now, as you know, uh, by now I've got a bit of a problem with my hands. So controllers and how they're designed are very important to me. And uh, this rather nice manual uh, shows you, you'll probably remember the, the controllers for the Wii. If not, this will be a bit of a, a walk down memory lane. This is the Wii mode. And then you had a nunchuck with it. And I was never overly fond of that arrangement. It always struck me as a, a type of controller that was more suited to sort of games to do with motion, with like aerobics and, and that sort of thing, which I know was very popular on the Wii, the, the fit, you know, fitness activities. Uh, so I, I can see it was more useful for that. But for playing an RPG, I, I found it cumbersome, I'd have to say. So that may well have uh, put me off in the end. I, I can't remember. It's a long time ago. Now, this original game was surprisingly ported to the 3DS in 2015. And I was very excited about that. I did get a new 3DS because you needed the upgraded 3DS to play this. And I just couldn't believe that they'd managed to fit this huge game onto a 3DS cartridge. Okay, the graphics obviously suffer. They weren't that brilliant to start with, obviously, from the Wii, but there was quite a downgrade to the 3DS. But it didn't really matter because just having it portable was a big, big thing, I thought. And I just loved and still love occasionally um, dipping in and just having a, a run around and doing one of the 1001 subquests there are in Xenoblade Chronicles. Um, I always get sidetracked in that game. You know, you, you can play it forever, basically, a bit like Skyrim, I suppose. You may have noticed um, the amiibo here. Um, that's Shulk, the main character. I think that's the only amiibo that was ever issued for the Xenoblade um, series. Now, Shulk is quite important because he was issued for the, I think it's Super Smash Brothers series. And he became very popular, I believe. In an interview, one of the um, management people at Monolith Software said that 
the popularity of, of the Shulk Amiibo helped sort of rekindle an interest in the Xenoblade game and it was actually really helpful for them so I thought that's an interesting little insight. While many people scoffed at the idea of having a huge RPG uh, ported onto the by then aging um, 3DS. They called it the new 3DS, but it was aging. But it served a very useful function in keeping the franchise alive and interest in it alive. And that was very significant because the same year, 2015, another Xenoblade game was released and that was a hu I mean, a really huge game. If you thought the original Xenoblade Chronicles was big, this game is super big. It's Xenoblade Chronicles X. And it's not a direct sequel to the original Xenoblade Chronicles. It's a very, very different type of game. So I need to talk about that briefly because Xenoblade Chronicles X while very highly rated by the critics and people who played it usually loved the game, it was not very successful. The problem was it was released for the Wii U, which we all know um, struggled. It never sold many units, so there wasn't a big install base there. And by 2015, when this game finally belatedly came out after many delays, the Wii U was on its last legs, basically. Announcements were coming about Nintendo working on a very new type of console with new architecture, and everybody was, you know, really excited about hearing about this NX, as it was called back then, which we now know as the Switch. Uh, so this game had a struggle from day one. As you can see, I've got the very big um, strategy guide for it. I got the limited edition at the time. I was so enthusiastic about it. Um, so I bought that and it is quite a nice one. As you can see, there is a steel book there uh, for X. I'll just call it X for short. And there is actually a rather nice little art book included. The, um, this item down at the bottom there is, is, a, is a map, a, a poster style map. So I'll just very, very briefly uh, show you a little bit of the, the artwork from Xenoblade Chronicles X. Uh, this is the main character, Elma. And this is one of those art books that just gives you um, a lot of different pictures in no particular order. But here you see some of the characters, so that's nice. I will put a link in the description below because a few days ago, one of our prominent JRPG YouTubers uh, who's also featured in my channel's listing. He put out a video on Xenoblade Chronicles X because he is a big fan and a big supporter of X. And I thought that that video is really interesting because it shows you what an achievement this game was at the time. And on the Wii U of all things, which is not the most powerful console, the scope and breadth of the game is simply breathtaking. It's, uh, they say that the size of the, of the open world is like, 10 times that of um, Breath of the Wild. Uh, it's far bigger than Skyrim. The mind boggles to think how they managed to fit all that onto um, a Wii U disc. I don't know. Many people have asked, will there be a port of X coming to the Switch? Obviously, people would be keen on that. 
I would be keen on that. But the news is not good. In an interview nearly two years ago, um, one of the, the people at Monolith Software said that they would love to bring X to the Switch, but it's out of the question. The game is so huge, they would have to, it sounds like, completely rewrite it to fit it onto the Switch. He said it's just the, the scope of it. It would just cost far too much. He said it wouldn't be happening. Now, that was nearly two years ago. Since then, the Switch has been, as we know, a stellar success. And the Xenoblade series has really had a new lease of life and proved very popular. So I guess there's just a smidgen of hope left um, that it might happen. But to be realistic, I wouldn't expect it. I would like to go back to X because I, I don't feel I did it justice at the time. I tried playing it at a time when I was still quite new to gaming and it can be an overwhelming experience starting out. The whole interface of the game resembles an MMO really. There is just menus and text and stuff everywhere. So it's a lot to take in. Because they emphasize the open world exploration so much, of necessity, the story had to take a bit of a back seat and the characters are not really, I don't think, quite as engaging as in the original uh, Xenoblade uh, story. So there are a few swings and roundabouts, I feel, with the game. But despite all that, it's an enormous achievement and it really should be um, recognized as such. I booted it up uh, today and uh, once again i was i was simply amazed and uh, i thought oh, i'll just have a quick look for 10 minutes and i really found it difficult putting the controller down the rain's starting to let up just in time for sunrise follow me i promise you're gonna love this Call this planet Mira. I can feel the hard work paying off. Um, I played it on the Wii U gamepad and quickly found that that is not an ideal way of playing it, especially if you've got rather small hands. The gamepad is rather clunky and reaching all the buttons is awkward. So I had a quick uh, look around and I did manage to find in a box somewhere far away the Wii U Pro Controller, which I think is the way to go to play this type of game. I'm really pleased. I must have bought that at some point. I can't even remember it. That's a good thing to have. Uh, Nintendo and their controllers sometimes um, drive me a bit up the wall, I'd have to say. There tend to be too many of them. So we've covered quite a lot of ground and we've, we've made it to 2015. But before we reach our current time with the definitive edition, now I'll just quickly um, uh, switch on my switch. Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which came out, I believe, soon after the switch was launched, probably in 2017. And as you can see, I have it digitally. This is a bit the elephant in the room, I'd have to say, because I thought at the time when it came out, do I get the collector's edition for Xenoblade Chronicles 2? I didn't have a Switch at the time, so it felt sort of 
kind of silly in a way and I hesitated and I didn't buy the physical edition, the collector set. I recently bought the game and the um, expansion Torna Golden Country in a sale digitally and when I started it up for the first time, a bit wondering how I would like it, I just fell in love with it straight away. And that was after all that hesitation, wondering whether the anime style characters in the Xenoblade environment, whether that would work, because it's very different from the original um, style of the game. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny, isn't it? Um, I'm such a collector, but that one eluded me. Uh, never mind. I've got the game and that's the important thing. Playing the game is what matters in the end. That game, the two, was a big success, as you're probably aware, and that really, um, I think, cemented the revival of Xenoblade Chronicles. And then we finally got the announcement that the original Xenoblade Chronicles would be remastered, even remade in places, um, characters, character portraits would be updated. They didn't just apply an HD effect, they, they literally painstakingly repainted whole scenes, redid the, 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 the characters. Um, amazing job. And I'm really pleased to have the uh, collector's set with the beautiful steel book, the lovely soundtrack, and above all, the absolutely stunning, amazing art book. So I'll go through this with you now for a bit because you have to see it to believe it. It's, it's one of the finest art books, certainly in my collection. And I've got a few very nice ones, but, but this one, this one's just breathtaking. And I did check, and while they say, oh, there might be spoilers, I won't show you anything that would be considered a spoiler, really. There we are, the Monado. So first, the characters. And the thing is, if you're really into Xenoblade, there, isn't, there aren't just a few illustrations. There is just so much detail for each character. This is just all shulk. See? And it's not just shulk who's treated in such detail. Every one of the main characters and even some of the lesser ones are get that kind of detailed attention. There's Fiora and I'll just speed up a bit through here because otherwise you'll be missing your dinner. The, the production value is very high, um, it's, it's beautiful, slightly glossy paper, there's rain in all his glory. And I'll just look at that, isn't that lovely? So I'll just go a bit more quickly now, shall I? I'm really flipping through large chunks here. There is just so much. I mean, I could take an hour showing you all this. Ricky, look at that. Isn't he cute? Chubby doesn't begin to describe it, eh? So I'll just go through here.
Maybe not. Trying to read it upside down. I don't know the actual number of pages, it's just astonishing. The scowls, as they're called, the Manx. Locations. Beautiful. This is obviously a, a treasure. This is something that I can spend whole afternoons sitting in my recliner and just uh, browsing through it. I will leave it at that. There's just so much here, it's almost overwhelming. So there we have it, um, a journey through Xenoblade Chronicles. 10 years starting 2010 with the original game and ending this year well not ending but we've come to an important point in 2020 with the definitive edition and i really really do hope that xenoblade chronicles keeps going strong and we will see more games in the franchise um, bits i think you can tell that and I want to go and experience that story all over again. I want to go back and play X properly. I've got Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and Torna on my Switch. Yes, it's a Xenoblade uh, universe and I'm very, very happy to explore it and spend a lot of time in it. So I hope um, you enjoyed that. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments what your experience with Xenoblade has been or whether you're thinking of picking it up and playing it. Please keep well. I'm Food for Dogs. Bye bye.